New York City, you are in for a treat. This next comedian has his second comedy album coming out called Upper Middle Trash. Available on iTunes May 6th. Check it out. Show him some love, Mr. John Moses. Now there's a Muslim you can feel safe around, right guys? <laughs> the Trump guy just went, nope. <laughs> That's how they trick you, dummy. I'm from Canada originally, hold your applause. And when people find out I'm from Canada, they automatically assume that I'm like this ultra liberal apologetic dude. I'm not really that guy, man. I used to be a little more liberal. 15 years ago when I was in college and my head was filled with weed and cotton candy. <laughs> but then I drank my way out of there and stumbled to the right a little bit, but I'm still very much in the center. Case in point. I absolutely believe 100% without a doubt that gays should be able to marry. You love that dude? You wanna marry him? <laughs> Go ahead. You're already doing the disgusting part. Why would I try and cock block a beautiful ceremony? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Oh, someone got tricked. <laughs> now, when I say disgusting part, obviously I'm talking about the dudes. I'm a big fan of chick on chick action. That's what I think heaven is. You get to the pearly gates and it's just lesbian angels floating by, 69ing each other. The heavy ones on the bottom because it's heaven and it's fair. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to see that? The Pope himself would want to see that. Especially the new cool guy. <laughs> but I bet you secretly, popes across time would want to watch. Like the Pope 200 years ago would burst in on two women in a room with his team of lesbian witch hunters and be like, burn those witches. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let them finish, let them finish. <laughs> yeah, get in there. Enjoy your last supper, ladies. <laughs> the last meal you're gonna get. Oh, I'm racist, anybody else? <laughs> I knew I could count on you guys, man. Now, when I say I'm racist, this is what I'm talking about, man. On the scale of racism, I think everybody's on it, you just gotta figure out where. I'm to the right of center a little bit. You go all the way to the right, that's where you get your maniacs, Muslim extremists, ultra-Orthodox Jews, Klan's members, oh Mel Gibson, <laughs> Kanye, all those maniacs way over there. And then, like, the middle of the right is Fox News and Al Sharpton, home team boys, you know? To the right of center a little bit's me and Charles Barkley, and we're just talking shit. <laughs> we're talking shit, talking shit, talking shit. We'll hang out with anybody, but you're gonna hear some shit getting talked. And then to the left of center is my wife, because she's a bit of a naive dummy when it comes to racism. But then you go all the way to the left, and you get these hyper-liberal pussy idealists that are so full of shit, they don't know they're racist to begin with, right? <laughs> Guys like Matt Lauer, who have a fucking heart attack every time some old, rich, white racist drops an N-bomb, right? Like, he's like, I can't believe they said that, right? Because he hangs out with Al Roker at the Christmas party, and... <laughs> occasionally bumps into Hootie at a Whole Foods. Fuck off. I was doing this show in Connecticut, country club, all white crowd. The fucking assholes in this place were welded shut. They were so uptight, they are just like. Mm. I was the wrong guy for that show. And then at the end of the show, this woman comes up to me and she was like 55, but spent a lot of her husband's money to look 45. And her hair. Her hair smelled like 400 bucks. And, and she was like this, she went. And she was so uptight, even her mouth looked like a little baby asshole. She was like. <laughs> and she went, that was racist. And I said, oh, fuck off. You live 175 miles away from the nearest NBA franchise and I'm racist? Have you ever lived beside a Mexican family that plays music till three o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday to celebrate their five-year-old son's birthday party? <laughs> because if you haven't, how do you know you don't hate Mexicans? You gotta live with some people. 
in order to understand how this shit works, right? I just moved to Jersey six months ago, and um, when people from New York hear that, they're like, why would you move to Jersey? Like I moved in Newark Penn Station or something, and I'm kicking away pigeons. No, I live in like a nice white dope part of Jersey, right? But when I lived in New York, my dudes was a, uh, a black dude and a Mexican Jew. That was my crew. That's how I rolled. I wasn't trying to fill any quotas or anything. They're just funny dudes, right? Now, in truth, the Mexican Jew is actually a Puerto Rican Jew. But this is what I've learned about Latinos since my time in New York. Latinos are racist towards other Latinos. So whatever Latino you're talking to, they think they're at the top of the pile, boy. So. If they're from Argentina, we've got the Pope. If, if they're from Colombia, it's like Coke and Folgers or whatever they do. The only thing they can agree on is that Mexicans are definitely at the bottom. Not my rule, I'm from fucking Canada. If you're speaking Spanish, you're a Mexican as far as I'm concerned. I didn't even know where Puerto Rico was on a map until I was 28. My buddy was like, I'm from Puerto Rico. I was like, oh, that's cool. Is that like outside of Cancun? I've been there. That was nice. Does it have a senior frog? So I don't know. Now, you might see us hanging out. I still hang out with them. When I'm in New York, they can't drive to Jersey until they get their license straight. But when I'm in New York and we're hanging out, you might see us and be like, oh, those guys aren't racist. Wrong. Hanging out with them makes me more racist. Because it exposes me to situations where I'm the only white guy in the room. Or the only white guy at a cookout. And when you're the only white guy at a cookout, you feel like an extra in a Spike Lee joint. <laughs> some old woman's putting salad on a plate. She's like, hey, white boy, you want some salad? I know you guys are always trying to live forever. Here, take that salad and get out of the sun. Get out of the sun. You burning up, baby, you burning up. Get under the tree where it's shady and you safe. You need an SPF? What do you need, like a 666? You look like the devil, motherfucker. <laughs> Why the fuck am I here? If you don't think you're racist, here's the test. Next time you're at the airport and you see a Muslim dude at your gate, real deal Muslim dude, not some suave looking motherfucker like Ahmed. <laughs> No, like, Ahmed's father, Ahmed. You see Ahmed? You see that fucking dude? With a bedsheet pajama suit on, looking like a villain from Aladdin? Tell me you don't start thinking about how you're gonna save the plane. I know better. I know better and I get all Marky Mark. I'm like, not on my plane, motherfucker. <laughs> about to put my dick in this chick's face. That's not a fucking terrorist. He's a refugee from Krapistan. He's trying to get the fuck out of there before he gets blown up. Doesn't even matter, though, man. Whether you think you're racist or not, it doesn't even matter. Because Latinos are going to be running this shit in the next 40 years anyway. <laughs> Suck it up. Learn the language. Buy Rosetta Stone. Nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> Nothing you can do to stop it. They can put up a giant electric fence along the Mexican-American border, and they'll be running their ACs off it with jumper cables as they catapult <laughs> people through the air. You think Arizona's got a problem now? Wait till it's hailing pregnant Mexican ladies. <laughs> well, I've had fun. <laughs> Before I get out of here. Just wanna say, R.I.P. Prince, you up in the heavens, purple raining down on all of our hearts. All of our hearts! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Thank you very much. Yo, buy my album, motherfuckers. Yeah.